Hello, good people of YouTube. In the last video, I showed you how to create multiple characters just by a text prompt using OpenArt. And in today's video, I wanted to follow up on that and show you how you can bring your images to life. Now, if you haven't already watched the video, make sure to check that one out first. And in the video, you would have seen in the introduction and the outro, the one minute animation I created with my characters. I'm gonna walk you step by step on how I put that all together. So to start off, we need a couple of characters. And if you're new to training characters, you can find the character feature on the left here. And we're gonna go ahead and click characters. If I scroll here, you're going to see my two characters, Luna and Raki. And I trained these two characters just with a description. And that is the feature right here. But if you want to do it with one image or four images or more, make sure to watch the previous video I did on creating a consistent character. So we're going to go ahead and click description. And obviously you want to give your character a name. My character's name was Raki for the raccoon. <laughs> when it comes to human-like animals, the actual word is anthropomorphic. And that's a mouthful. It took me a while to learn how to pronounce that properly. So I always start with anthropomorphic raccoon, wolf, or whatever the animal is. Typically, if you put something like cute, adorable, it'll give it that extra cuteness if that's what you want. And then I'll put the animal and followed by what they're wearing in terms of clothing. Now I always say try to be as descriptive as possible but keep it simple as well. Don't prompt for like a plaid t-shirt or flower patterns because you're just going to get too many variations. So in this case I put wearing a leather jacket, actually a black leather jacket, jeans, and that's all you want to put because what you're doing here is you're creating what's called a Laura. So you have a base model and the Laura goes on top, which is the additional style that you're creating. And what happens is that when the training happens, it's going to look at patterns. If you don't want your character to have like jewelry or a hat or anything like that, don't include it in your prompt. Furthermore, when you train a Laura, it can be a lot more accurate in terms of consistency versus training a general model. In another video, I'll go through all those differences, but for now, just keep those things in mind. And for the style, I selected Pixar. And as you see, there are various styles, photorealistic, digital art, anime, so on and so forth. Or if there's a style lacking, you can simply just put it in this text box here. Now, once you're happy with the settings, click on create previews. It does cost 15 credits to generate these previews. And then you'll get three previews to select from. And this one is actually very close to the actual image that I got for my character. And then all that's left to do is click on create character. That's pretty much all you have to do when you're training a character from a description. Now, after about 10 minutes or so, once your character is trained, it will tell you at the bottom of your character if it's ready and you'll also get an email. So now we're going to select create image and under model or character, we're going to switch it from flex dev, go into my characters and we'll select Raki here. Next, we're going to select prompt and reference. Now for the prompt, we're going to put something super simple. Raki is sitting on a park bench eating a sandwich. But we also want to have the second character in there. So we're going to go ahead and click add character. And I'm going to select Luna here. We'll see both characters are enabled now. And by the way, this only works with text prompts right now. You can't use this with image to image or anything else. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to put the character at the front here. So Raki and Luna are sitting on a park bench eating a sandwich. Now by default, prompt enhance mode is on. For a simple prompt like this, I'm going to leave it on. But if you have a very specific prompt with more details based on a style, whatever the case may be, you might want to turn this off. Other than that, that's all you have to do. We're going to create eight images and we'll take a look at some of them. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of them. Now to make this bigger, we can click on view here. And yeah, looks great. I would actually use this in one of my scenes. It does keep most of the character traits. You see our hands here though. They look more like Raki's hands, but probably just have to regenerate or maybe use the tools to fix the hands. 
This one is cute too, where they actually have their feet on the ground and her hands match better in this image. As I said in the previous video, for 2D, 3D style images, this feature works very, very good. Now, before we even create the video, we need to think about the story we want to tell. And a good way to do that is to storyboard your idea. Personally, I've been using Canva for many years and they have some really cool storyboarding features. I believe the free tier, you should be okay to at least use the basic tools. So what you want to do on the top search bar here is you can just click on storyboard. And then you'll get various storyboard templates if you want to start from a template or you could create your own. But the templates are really helpful. So for example, I'm going to use this one. And then you want to think about the scenes. So obviously like all this stuff, I'm just going to ignore all this text for now. But what you can do is just delete these images. And what you see here are called grids. If you go into the left panel, this is your first time using Canva, I'll walk you through. But there's a section here called Elements. If you click that, you get all these options. Within these options are something called grids, where they're basically templates for images or anything else, and they're pre-made, right? So what's cool about these grids is, for example, if I slide this image in there, we'll close that, you see that it just fits in there nicely, and then we can set up our frames. I'm going to remove all these, all this text for now. Just keep it simple. Now at this point, this is where you want to tell your story. You want to think about the beginning and the end. It may be a good idea to actually even put a little overview or perspective of what's happening in the scene. So if you want to even just add some text, you can go to the left panel here, click on text. And I'm just going to click on this text here and bring it up here for now. Any tool that you're working with, you'll have options at the top, just like any word processing program. So I'm just going to change the color to white and give it a, just a standard font. And we'll change the size. And generally, <laughs> this is the ideal two best friends going out for a day and hanging out. So when I think about this day, what are the sequences that happen for that day? So let's say scene one, Luna is waiting for Raki. Perhaps she's sitting in front of her house waiting. And then scene two, we can have Raki waving hello as he arrives. So you get my point. You want to go through that process and think of those scenes from start to finish. Now for the sake of time, I'm going to fill in the rest of this on my own and cut to the next part. All right, so now that I have my storyboard lined up, as I said, there are actually 13 scenes and it ends with Luna and Raki hugging, saying goodbye. And obviously in between, we have things like they are eating burgers in the outdoor patio. They're in a club dancing, having fun. And the storyboard part is actually super helpful when you start prompting for both the images and the videos. At this point, what I do is copy the description of the first scene and use it as inspiration. We're going to head back to open art. And I'm simply going to paste that description in the prompt box here. Totally up to you if you want to add more use enhanced prompt. Since the first scene is only with Luna, I'm going to remove Raki from the description and remove him from here. And I'm going to adjust the prompt so that it makes some sense, right? And then we're just going to generate some images and pick the best one. Out of all the generations, this is the one that I chose for the first scene. So basically, that's all I did. I came back to my storyboard. Let's say I'm picking scene four here. I'm going to copy the description. Make sure I have both characters selected. And then just paste the description into the prompt area. And then rinse and repeat that whole process. Once you have all the images for your scene, you can go ahead on the left panel here, select upload and click on upload files. And then it's just a matter of putting these in so that you can visually see how the story is shaping. So now you have a very rough storyboard where you can visually see how the story flows and it really gives you a visual way to see do these scenes make sense. 
For example, here's Luna in the beginning waiting for Raki. He says hello. She's excited to see him, waves back. They're walking in the city to get some smoothies. They go for some go-karting. They play in the park on some swings. By then, they're hungry, so they eat some burgers. They go dancing. I love this dancing scene, by the way. And then they go over to one of their homes, probably Rocky's house. They're playing some music playing some video games, and then he walks her home like the gentleman he is. And then it closes with them hugging to close off the scene. So this is a great way to kind of just set up your story. And it's also a great way to get yourself organized and not just generating images on the fly and coming up with things just randomly, right? Now, to bring them to life, you need to animate them with video. So let's take this image as an example. I really like this scene, and to be honest, I meant to change her eye color to brown so that it's more consistent, but I digress. At this point, you want to click on this icon. This will automatically bring you to the image to video section. And for the model, I highly suggest you use Kling. I just find Kling has better movement, a lot of expressive emotions as well, and it works very well for 3D characters. Your image should already be uploaded. And then once again, we can use the storyboard descriptions as the video prompt. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that in there. You don't necessarily have to keep the names in there. What I had done was put a raccoon and wolf are playing video games sitting cross-legged on the floor. Now, if you want to be fancy, you could include camera movements like camera zooming in or dolly in, camera is panning left, those types of things. But I found that even just these simple descriptions work very well, especially with cling. Negative prompts just use something like blurry, low quality. I found you don't really need much. If anything, you probably don't need it at all. For creativity level, I just leave it at 0.5. You can experiment. And I just use five second clips in standard. I haven't really seen significant difference with Pro. Maybe if you're going 10 seconds and you want something more creative, you might want to go with Pro. But also with standard, it's a lot cheaper than Pro. And I found that it works very well. All that's left to do is hit create. Now I like to generate at least two different variations to compare the outputs. Sometimes it'll get great results right away. Sometimes it won't. So for example, here's the first generation. And yeah, I really like the expression, the head movements. It looks very engaging. And then the second one, let's start from the beginning. This one just as well, you know, how they look at each other looks like they're engaging. So technically I could have used the first one. So I basically did that for all the images that we generated, animated them with Kling. And then the videos that you do like, you want to download them into a local folder, keep them all in one folder. And before we start editing, you want to think of, are you going to be using music or sound effects? In my case, I like using Udio. You can use Suno if you want, or if you are running something locally, you can use that. Now I'm not going to go through a whole tutorial on how to use Udio, but basically this was the prompt that I did. A song about two friends that are best friends. They love to have fun and enjoy each other's company. Tags were pop, soul, modern, creative. I created a one minute song roughly. And then we bring this all in into a video editor. Now, personally, I use DaVinci Resolve. Sometimes I use CapCut for quick little animations or little effects. It's just simpler to do in CapCut. But for the most part, something like this is actually a very simple edit. And again, I'm not going to go in depth on how I edit. But one thing you do want to keep in mind is the timing of the music. Typically, most Western music is in beats of four. So one, two, three, four, one, two three, four. Not always, but typically a good technique is to change clips on every beat. So for example, if I play this clip, we can reach the sky. So you'll notice when it goes to the main course, the scene changes, right? 
And by doing that, the images that you see flows along with the music. Again, you don't have to do it that way, but it is a good strategy to kind of put everything together so that it feels good and looks good too. Now this video was supposed to be sort of a feel good video about two friends just kicking back and having fun. And that was basically the main goal and purpose of this little scene. As always, my friends, let me know what you think in the comments below. And I'd love to hear your own process, if this is something that you're doing, and maybe if you want more in-depth tutorials on creating the music, adding sound effects, doing the whole editing process. If that's something that interests you, you gotta let me know in the comments. Otherwise, if I do the video, no one watches it kind of a waste of both our time, right? So let me know. In the meantime, my friends, make sure to check out these other open art videos on creating consistent characters. Until the next video, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.